Hey folks, this is Trey Smith with Flow Path Management. Hope you're doing well today. We're going to talk a little bit today about a vertical flow path event that we created during one of our recent flow path management training experiences in Greensboro, North Carolina in May of 2014. The house we had acquired was a 5,000 square foot house. It had five bedrooms, uh, a dining room, a kitchen, and a master bedroom on the first floor as well as a great room as well as a, a full basement. The camera views that we're looking at in the lower left hand corner is the foyer view which shows the fire gases that will be exiting the kitchen area into a foyer that was open to the second floor bedrooms. And then in the upper frames we'll see a kitchen view which shows uh, looking into the dining room from the kitchen and then the uh, remainder is a view from the exterior Division A side. Now, as the ignition officers are igniting the fire, the fire in the dining room was already built, and so they're essentially building the fire in the kitchen. I want you to pay particular attention to the lower left-hand corner as we watch the fire gases as they leave the kitchen area into the open space foyer which extends up into the bedroom areas. The kitchen fire is ignited and as this occurs we notice that the fire is in a bi-directional flow. The fuel that we were using consisted of legacy fuel only which was about four to five pallets per each room. So as we watch the ignition officers finish their igniting of the fires I want you to pay particular attention to the gases as they leave the kitchen area and into the upward areas of the second floor. As well as, I want you to pay particular attention to the amount of thermal energy that the ignition officer is sustaining as he stokes the fire. We can see this on his turnout gear. Now as we watch the fire start to increase or fire growth increase, the velocity leaving the kitchen into the upper areas where the bedrooms are will substantially increase. You can also watch this on the uh, center frame on, this, on the top level. Notice that we are just now starting to see some visible flame showing up from the kitchen area that's actually extending into the dining room area. Again, this is legacy fuel and so as we watch these fire gases, there's very little visible flame that's evident, but when we look in the lower left-hand corner of those fire gases and how quickly they leave the kitchen area and begin exhausting into the upper spaces where the bedrooms are located, we start to see more heat energy being produced out the front window as well as the neutral plane, which is demonstrated in the thermal energy in the, the top center frame start to drop down. Now pay att particular attention to the scale on the right side of the uh, of the center frame. Don't necessarily pay attention to the uh, numbers in the lower right hand corners of the frames. We want to focus our attention to the colors which shows us what resolution or sensitivity mode that the camera is in. So what we'll see is a transitional attack that takes place from the outside to knock down the initial body of fire and the fire attack crew will make the attack from the front door once they enter. And I want you to pay particular attention as they open up the nozzle the amount of, of cooling that takes place in the kitchen area. Now as we watch the fire attack crew commence their attack we notice that they failed to perform a go and no go structural and thermal assessment of the conditions inside. This could have proved catastrophic in the event that a lower ceiling existed which could have resulted in fire gases exiting directly over the top of their heads. So as we watch the fire attack commence from the foyer area into the kitchen area we notice that the temperatures drop dramatically from over 1300 degrees to around 300 degrees, thus providing a safer fire attack for the crew prior to entering the fire room. Which brings the question of why do we wait until we see visible fire before making the attack? 
Hitting the fire from a remote distance provides us valuable time to cool the environment prior to entering the fire room. So as you can see, a combination of a transitional attack, surface cooling, and the go-no-go -no -go can provide a much safer fire attack for advancing interior crews. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you would like more information on our flow path management training experience, please feel free to give me a call at 704-507-6152 or my email at tsmith at rescuenc.com. Thank you and hope you enjoyed the video.